Terry Haynes joins us now. He's a managing director and head of political analysis for the investment banking advisory firm Evercore. Thank you so much for joining us. So, you know, looking at that story just there, what's your read on how the tariff situation and the China-U.S. trade war, uh, what kind of impact will it have on voters at the ballot box next Tuesday? Well, the impact is uh, really mixed. And uh, the one person in that story, I thought, put it very well by saying, uh, you know, we're not happy about what's going on, but we're absolutely going to stick with Trump. And I think there is very much a feeling that uh, there is a, there, there's a game plan and there's an end to all this. And generally speaking, I don't think it hurts the president's uh, popularity in the heartland states uh, much at all. How much time are they willing to wait, though? How much time are they willing to wait? Um, I think a while, actually. Uh, the, the president is not, is not signaling a, uh, a quick win or a cut-and-run strategy. I think people are very, very willing to be patient, and they understand there's some pain there. Uh, they won't want to wait forever, and I think the president won't want to wait forever for that matter. Um, I want to get your take on this recent phone call between President Trump and President Xi Jinping. Um, President Trump described their trade conversation as long and good, and it boosted markets somewhat. Um, what is your read on that, especially ahead of this face-to-face -face meeting between these two leaders at the G20 summit uh, this month in Argentina? I think there are two things going on here. One is that the, the United States government... Uh, sometimes through the president, sometimes elsewhere, is, is trying to signal China through a combination of honey and vinegar, uh, depending on the circumstances, uh, that, it, that it's willing to, to resolve these issues, uh, but that China needs to engage. Uh, and everybody knows what the U.S. core issues are, the IP, the forced tech transfer, uh, the metals issues. Uh, and the United States wants some satisfaction on those issues. Uh, and uh, so, so there's a lot of signaling going on here. Uh, there's, and the other aspect of this, I think, is in the run-up to the midterm elections, uh, the president is trying to do everything possible to make sure that a volatile U.S. market uh, is as positive as possible and is trying to signal to those markets, both before and after the midterms, that what he's interested in doing is actually resolving these issues, uh, but also being very strong to say, if not, then we'll continue. So a little honey ahead of Tuesday. <laughs> That's think, what we're saying, right? The so, timing yes. of it is, is very interesting because you yeah. also have uh, Trump's attorney general, Jeff Sessions, announcing these charges against a few Chinese companies today. So a little vinegar uh, there well, as well. well. I mean, a little, a little mixed, bit, sure. mixed, mixed messaging. Uh, well, a little bit, sure. But uh, at the same time, uh, the United States government has not been shy about suggesting that China needs to do a variety of things uh, uh, both in bilaterals with the United States and with the larger world community, uh, in, in order to solve a number of these problems that I've uh, that I've already mentioned, uh, and they continue on that. So again, the timing of both these things happening before Tuesday is that intentional, or can we see some of this lessening post-election next week? Well, I doubt there was a coincidence there. Uh, and at the same time, I would be willing to bet that one of the things that was discussed in the, the call between the two presidents uh, was exactly an understanding that, look, you know, we, we have, you know, we have these, these concerns in our own country. This is going on. Uh, we've talked about uh, the broader geopolitics with China, most recently in an early October speech by the vice president. Uh, but, you know, we very much want a resolution on these trade issues. Uh, and, you know, we'd like to set a, a tone uh, to try to make sure that that happens on some mutually agreeable uh, terms and schedule. And regardless of what happens in Argentina in this conversation between the two presidents, which um, the Trump administration is trying to manage expectations about that outcome, could we see the rest of tariffs? Uh, could we see the rest of everything being taxed after January? Uh, that's, that remains entirely possible, and I think uh, depends in, to some extent on what happens at the G20 meetings. I don't expect, and I don't think a lot of other people expect there to be some uh, magic breakthrough that happens in December. Uh, but at the same time, the United States is very capable and very able to put the ramping up of the 25%, 10 to 25% on the 200 and further tariffing on hold if it has some satisfaction that China is ready to engage. What's your uh, outlook for the next six months? Uh, my outlook for the next six months is that fundamentally that uh, I think these tariffs continue. I don't think there's a, a quick end to this trade war. Uh, but at the same time, I think that at some point, these two countries are going to want to engage uh, and are going to want to actually resolve a lot of these issues. Uh, I just don't think it's going to be a magic bullet that happens in the next month.
All right, Terry Haynes, great to hear your take. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Elaine.